Hello everyone, and welcome back to my F122 My Team Career Mode for the Belgian Grand Prix today. Uh, we are only about half a day late with this video, but uh, anyway, we'll try to catch up um, over the next day or two. But anyway, uh, we head to uh, the Pirelli Hot Lap Challenge. Uh, once again, I've chosen the Rival Jewel. The reason I uh, continuously choose these is uh, because they are simply the easiest. So uh, it almost guarantees us to get the money in a claim uh, every time. And uh, yeah, that is uh, why I've uh, chosen it. I remember doing this uh, exact one last season. So once again, uh, we just uh, skip straight onto the end. Not much to see. Uh, we got past them as our uh, rival straight away. And uh, that was all there was uh, to it. But uh, yeah. Uh, we got the three from three, and uh, yeah, we move on to uh, the actual important part of uh, the race weekend. We will fix up that chassis upgrade that failed at the end of the previous. Uh, 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 I was about to say at the end of the previous upgrade, the end of the previous episode, uh, and uh, we will also purchase a drag reduction upgrade as well. And uh, yeah, we will head. Uh, into qualifying, but uh, we see a huge uh, upturn in uh, performance by uh, well, all three of the top teams, uh, including ourselves, Ferrari, Red Bull, and ourselves. Uh, but we all kind of move up in tandem, so uh, we're, uh, we're basically all just in the same place. So yeah, I don't think anything's really changing from uh, from the previous round, but you know. Uh, it, it depends what parts of the car, uh, you know, have been worked on and, uh, you know, where, where that's all going to play out. Uh, but anyway, uh, we move into, uh, qualifying then and, uh, in a Q1, uh, the rain actually comes down midway through our, uh, first flying lap. Uh, we did, did, uh, go on for a second lap, but there was no improvement to be found as, uh, the rain... Uh, it just came down harder as uh, the session went on, so uh, that was uh, not worthwhile. But uh, Max Verstappen uh, is actually the very last driver uh, on circuit to set the time. Nicholas Latifi there, second last driver out, and uh, he goes last of the runners so far. No surprise there as the track is quite wet at this point. Here comes Verstappen. He may be able to get himself uh, outside of uh, the bottom uh, six if it's a great lap, but it's not. He only goes P18, and Max Verstappen is going to get knocked out in Q1 here in Belgium as the rain is only going to get heavier from here. The track is only going to get wetter, and uh, I'll be surprised if we see another car out on circuit from this point forward in the session. And Max Verstappen and Red Bull, a huge blunder there. He's backed out of it, not even attempting a second lap. The track's too wet to push on on the slick tyres. And uh, more rain forecast uh, for the future of this session. Uh, we skip forward uh, in time. And uh, you can see no one going back out on circuit. No one even attempting. And uh, the track stays completely vacant uh, for the remaining time in the session. And Max Verstappen will be starting from P18 on the grid. The championship leader and Red Bull, a huge blunder here in Belgium. They can hardly afford another mistake after uh, getting caught up in, uh, you know, an incident that wasn't their fault to be fair, uh, the French Grand Prix, but it also ultimately cost them, uh, you know, some championship margin. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, you know, they can't afford to, to lose much more, so, It'll be interesting to see how he can recover uh, throughout the course of the race. No doubt he will come forward, but uh, yeah, he has certainly put himself into a difficult position here. He's got the Alpha Tauris either side of him, Sonoda ahead and Gasly behind. Uh, Daruvala out qualifying Albon and Nicholas Latifi uh, rounding off the grid. Oscar Piastri are just scraping into Q2 uh, by fractions of a second there. Uh, we move on into Q2 and uh, I actually thought it might be dry by the end of Q2. It was borderline, but uh, in the end we went out on the intermediate tyres and that was definitely the right choice. You can see the track's still very much damp, 
but uh, the dry conditions are coming and it will be dry I think by the time we get to Q3 if we can make it into the session but uh, the reason I left the lap so late is because uh, the track conditions are, of course are only improving so uh, I need every possible advantage I can get uh, in these conditions uh, when I do struggle and uh, we go P4 in the end so that was actually a pretty decent uh, quality lap in the end and uh, we are safely through and so is Oscar Pia Piastri so uh, a much better qualifying performance from him this weekend and uh, Kevin Magnussen very decent qualifying effort from him and the Williams P11 nicely done Robert Schwartzman P12 in the Haas not too bad from him Esteban Ocon in the Alpine he would have hoped for more there Dan Tictum also knocked out in the Alfa Romeo so uh, yeah he probably about where the Alfa Romeo uh, is expected to be Joe Guan Yu there as well and Mick Schumacher uh, the bottom of the list in Q2 so that is how we all stack up as we head in to Q3 so the sun's out once again and uh, at the moment, uh, the track is uh, still slightly damp. Uh, I, I uh, equipped the uh, intermediate compound tires, and you can see as I'm flicking between the dryers, uh, that gives us a sort of uh, update as to uh, the tra how the track conditions are uh, improving. And uh, as the numbers change, it uh, tells you that uh, the track conditions are still moving more towards slick. Uh, if the track was completely dry, those numbers wouldn't be changing. Uh, it's a little trick I picked up uh, a while ago. But uh, anyway, uh, so uh, we sit in the garage and watch uh, for a short time. But uh, eventually we do go out and uh, set our first flyer. I didn't want to leave it too long because I do want to set uh, multiple laps uh, in this session. So uh, we go out set our first flying lap. And uh, that lap... Uh, puts us into second position so far, just in behind Sergio Perez. But uh, still plenty of track evolution to come, so uh, we'll see what we can do on our second run uh, right at the end of the session. Uh, we timed this almost perfectly to get uh, the best of the track evolution. Uh, the timer hitting zero right as we go through turn one. And uh, yeah, we've dropped well down the order, so we do need to get a good lap in as uh, we head uh, you know, now through Puon, and uh, we are uh, chipping away, gaining chunks of time through each corner. By the time we get to the bus stop, uh, we have gained masses of time, over a second green uh, over our previous lap. So uh, this has been a pretty tidy one overall, and uh, this... Okay, good job, mate. Really well done. That was a fantastic drive. ...will put us on pole position for the Belgian Grand Prix. We're Ready for tomorrow's race, but before we begin, let's have a quick look at those who'll be fronting the grid. The Scientist, Sainz, and Lando Norris. Goodbye for now then, but really we're just getting started. Make sure to join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Wow, there we go. I believe that that is our first poll. So, uh, that is a uh, nice achievement for the team. And uh, to do it here in Belgium, uh, where qualifying, it's probably not the most important qualifying of the season, but, uh, you know, uh, starting at the front is uh, never a disadvantage. So, uh, yeah, let's get into the race. We're in Belgium once again for today's round of the Formula One World Championship. It's a race that the great Ayrton Senna won six times, and in 2019, Charles Leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since Michael Schumacher back in 1992. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. The Scientist lines up on pole position, and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Leclerc, Sergio Perez, and Hamilton. Ricardo, Russell, Oscar Piastri, and Lance Stroll. Magnussen, Schwartzman, Esteban Ocon, 
and Tictum. Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, Max Verstappen, and Pierre Gasly. Daruvala, Albon, Latifi, and Guan Yu Zhou. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. Alrighty, so here we are on the grid then for the Belgian Grand Prix. In terms of strategy for this one, uh, the fastest way to get to the end ideally would be two sets of medium tyres, but of course that is illegal. You need to change compounds. So uh, it'll be softs to two sets of mediums, but it will be a fairly short stint uh, on that soft set of tyres. So uh, here we go then uh, to the five red lights. And it's lights out and away we go for the Belgian Grand Prix. And it's an okay start for us as we race our way down to the first corner. Hard to compare because we can't immediately see uh, any of the other cars. But uh, we hold it through the middle of the corner and uh, we maintain a first position. So it's a decent enough start. And uh, we race our way up Rouge and Radion for the first time. Bit of an awkward line uh, through there. We didn't make things too easy for ourselves. But uh, anyway, we're now... Uh, running up okay, the uh, along the Camel Straight. Safety straight car down. is out, virtual safety car. Uh, now a full safety car. And uh, we have Charles Leclerc out of the race already at Radion. What has happened here? The Ferraris have come together at turn four of the race at Radion. Oh my goodness. Ferrari. Oh no. Charles Leclerc plowing into the back of his teammate. And then backing it into the wall on three wheels. Carlos Sainz there. I think just getting a little bit caught up. We're going to come into the pits uh, under this safety car. Uh, get rid of this set of soft compound tyres. Uh, because we're in... I mean, this uh, stint was going to be very short anyway. So, uh, we're, we will of course go to the back of the train. But the train will disappear from in, in front of us quite soon. So, I don't think we'll lose too much time uh, in that train. So I think this will be a worthwhile strategy. That was a fantastic stop, faster than we were expecting. You only have to stop once now, one stop left. There are, of course, other drivers starting on the medium compound tyres, but I think we should be able to get past them. Our car's pretty quick now, and uh, especially around this circuit. Uh, I mean, we took pole position, and uh, we are, uh, you know, we're looking pretty strong so far, albeit we only managed four corners before a safety car. But uh, yeah, I, I do believe that uh, we should have the pace to uh, to get through the field. Okay, the incident's been cleared. Let's get back uh, up without to losing speed. too much time. So anyway, on the safety car restart, immediately beginning that fight through the field, double move uh, down the inside of uh, Joe Guan Yu and Nicholas Latifi, and uh, we make up those two places. A little bit aggressive, Latifi opening the steering there to uh, avoid a little bit of contact and. Uh, no contact was made in the end, so uh, all is good. We continue moving on. Big lunge down the inside of Jay and Daruvula. And uh, once again, we make the move all sliding on the exit there. But thankfully, we're able to keep things pointing uh, generally in the right direction. And uh, we continue pushing on. We now catch up uh, to Max Verstappen himself. Again, that safety car uh, prevented his progress a little bit. As, uh, you know, the early phase of the race is uh, where he... You know, really could have uh, made some ground, but uh, that uh, has uh, probably spoiled his chances a little bit uh, in the sort of early chaos. So, you know, that's uh, let everyone settle in uh, before he really had a chance to uh, make the most of uh, that, uh, you know, early race scrapping. So that's uh, a little bit unfortunate for him as uh, ahead of us, uh, uh, Pierre Gasly was Great making the move on the Alex Albon. So, uh, in fact, Verstappen's lost out because Gasly, uh, remember, started behind Max Verstappen, is now ahead. And, uh, in fact, so did uh, uh, Alex Albon because uh, Verstappen outqualified the Astons, didn't he? So, unless he uh, had a grid penalty, uh, Verstappen has uh, lost out uh, on the start. Uh, as is Joe Guan Yu, but uh, he is running in last, so perhaps he did have a grid penalty. I should have actually watched the grid sequence. But uh, anyway, uh, we continue to uh, push on, 
and uh, we are uh, now uh, trying to make a move around the outside of Albon on replay here and uh, there was a little bit of contact there but I think Albon is fine uh, I think he, there was uh, no damage to uh, his front wing just uh, yeah we squeezed him onto the apex slightly there and uh, he was keen to uh, battle on but uh, anyway big lunge down the inside and uh, now making the move on Pierre Gasly and uh, we get through nice work mate that brings you up a place up into P15 now and now big ice. lunge down the inside of Dan Tictum he sees us at the last moment and uh, gives us a bit of space uh, otherwise I think we we're going to uh, lose an end plate there and uh, you'll see on the replay here uh, he just uh, opened up the uh, steering there and gave us some space on the apex uh, at the last moment so uh, thank you very much Dan Tictum uh, for uh, seeing us in the mirrors there because uh, that was uh, about to get uh, very awkward. Uh, this is the battle in front of us now. Yuki Tsunoda making the move on Robert Schwartzman and uh, Yuki Tsunoda getting the move done. Now down the inside we go over oh, both of them in one corner and uh, we get the job done on the Japanese driver and the world flag driver as uh, he is in the F1 games. But uh, we continue to uh, push on, making the move now down the inside, or oh, a little bit close uh, with Esteban Ocon. That was borderline a little bit late for us there, but uh, Ocon saw us coming and uh, gave us the room as we uh, now begin to uh, look no for a move at the moment. Just focus on, the driving. on uh, Nick Schumacher. Hard to uh, get a run. Uh, anywhere in uh, this sort of second to sort of third of the lap but Schumacher peels off and uh, we Oscar's now, coming in for his stop now have uh, okay, a lot no of cars coming into now. the pit lane Keep care of them. so uh, there's a few less that we have to worry about K-Mag in front of us now with a William in the Williams uh, I did mention he had a great qualifying effort as uh, Nick Schumacher retires from the race with a mechanical failure uh, I was uh, concentrating on the race a little too much to uh, see the little notification pop up there as we go for the move around the outside of Kevin Magnussen. And uh, that was a neat little maneuver there. Nice move. Keep going. And uh, shows the grip we have uh, over the Williams on uh, what are really only one lap fresher medium tyres, but uh, in a far superior car. But uh, yeah, we are uh, now all the way up. Uh, into a third position with only Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz in front of us now and uh, they are on the medium compound tyres uh, which uh, they started the race on so we're basically uh, a pit stop ahead of them in terms of strategy but they of course have the soft tyres to come I believe at the end of the race uh, if they choose to go in that direction, they'll have to use the soft or hards at some point. Uh, they, in theory, they could do a one-stop onto the hards. That could also be the way to go for them, as uh, Carlos Sainz uh, makes his uh, pit stop. And Sergio Perez uh, will be uh, following him, him, following him in very shortly, I believe. Okay, Sainz is behind you. So uh, we continue to push on. Sainz is putting the pressure on us. Sergio Perez uh, makes his stop onto another set of the medium compound tyres. We go wide and Carlos Sainz says uh, thank you very much and uh, takes the lead uh, with that little mistake there uh, from us. So a uh, little whoopsie there at uh, the first corner for us and uh, that allows the Ferrari uh, into the race lead although it might not work out too badly because we have the DRS and uh, we're going to uh, be able to swing straight back past him as uh, we head into uh, Lacombe and uh, we'll easily get back past uh, Carlos Sainz and uh, back into the race lead so uh, in the end uh, not too bad and uh, we retake first position uh, now uh, we're going to uh, make a pit stop on lap 22 uh, I believe of this race 22 or 23 and uh, basically split it halfway from uh, when we pit uh, on the first lap. Carlos Sainz uh, continues to uh, scrap it out with us 
as uh, we continue to bash on with this one. Uh, we're on lap 19 of the race now as uh, we are starting to lose grip on these tyres. They have seen better days but we are just about keeping up with Science on his newer tyres when we have DRS. So uh, we're fighting aggressively and uh, trying our best to keep up with him and uh, you know keeping Sergio Perez at bay as well uh, but uh, at the moment uh, you know they're both uh, looking very quick so it's probably only a short matter of time uh, before they get through but we'll see how it goes but uh, yeah you can see Perez is uh, quickly closing up uh, to this uh, battle pack and as we go deep into Rivage, uh, Carlos Sainz got the inside line there and uh, he's through we can't quite uh, keep the nose in on the inside there Sergio Perez uh, I think got caught up uh, behind us there and uh, unable to uh, get a run but eventually he'll make the move although very deep there we try and get uh, back around the outside but we get caught up on the curb and Perez will maintain a second position and uh, I've actually completely missed okay, our uh, pit stop, stop window. Your pit window is going to open in three laps time. Pit window opens in three laps. And uh, because when we uh, made that pit stop, uh, the strategy didn't reset. So, you know, the, the our original uh, second stop uh, lap uh, is still what was set in the strategy, uh, which was uh, lap 26. Uh, in the end, we came in on uh, lap 25. Uh, only one lap earlier so we did stretch these mediums a little longer than we had to but they will give us fresher tyres the at the end and bit of a slow stop as Oscar Fiastri goes past so uh, that potentially cost us that position although potentially could have saved us from an awkward rejoin uh, with our teammate we blaze on and catch up to our teammate though and uh, Hopefully we should be able to find our way past him uh, very soon. Uh, probably uh, along the run towards uh, Lake Om will be the spot as we uh, chase him uh, all the way up the hill. And uh, yeah, we should be able to get the move done uh, along the straight. He moves out of the way for us and uh, we'll be able to uh, swing around the outside here. And uh, yeah, no issue there. We are through and uh, up into P7. So Oscar Piastri is still running a decent race here in 8th uh, position at the moment. We'll see where he finishes of course. But uh, yeah, running P7, seventh place. in P8 ahead. at the moment. The in front is three Stroll 3.5 seconds up the road though as we continue to race on. Stroll is not the driver we catch. We actually catch Max Verstappen who is yet to make his final stop. Uh, we go around the outside of the Dutchman and uh, move ourselves up into third place. Stroll and the like uh, all made their final stops. So uh, we'll see uh, where Verstappen emerges uh, amongst that lot uh, later on. But uh, that was a nice move actually on uh, Max Verstappen just swinging it around the outside. And uh, he had no way of fighting back uh, from that one. He threw the defense but... Uh, the uh, braking performance around the outside, he had nothing to uh, compare to that. But uh, yeah, the, the effect of new tyres around this circuit seems to be very powerful. And uh, you know, I felt it when Science and Perez were catching up, and uh, now Verstappen's feeling it as uh, you know, we've got uh, you know, relatively new tyres on the car, and his have uh, seen better days uh, by this point. So. Yeah, we are, I think, trucking along pretty well in this race. It is a little bit tricky to keep up. Uh, but as you can see there, Carlos Sainz has uh, made his final stop onto the hard compound tyres. So that'll be interesting to see. It's an interesting choice. I was sure he was going to go onto the softs. Uh, they're going to last until the end of the Italian Grand Prix, I think. But uh, anyway, uh, um, uh, that's what Ferrari have uh, gone with there. Um, but anyway, uh, Max Verstappen uh, chose the soft compound tyres. He doesn't have the track position though. He's down in, uh, I think, about 8th position uh, at the moment. 
and uh, Sergio Perez puts the soft compound tires on and uh, drops into P3 that we quickly chases down Carlos Sainz and now their fight for second place is on Sergio Perez round the outside of Sainz who pushes him wide and Sainz is not going to give this one up easy but Perez back down the inside straight away and the Mexican gets through Carlos Sainz forward as hard as he could but uh, Sergio Perez on the soft compound tyres was always going to have more grip and Verstappen making the move there as well on uh, George Russell I believe uh, for P6 there so uh, Max Verstappen finding his way through the field uh, and uh, coming up through the order as well meanwhile Sergio Perez is uh, closing into us too so Sergio Perez is uh, winding himself up for uh, a good finish here he makes the move all the way around the outside we've just got the nose in enough for him to uh, have to uh, abandon ship there a bit and uh, have to uh, hop over those inside curves that uh, disturbs his momentum but uh, we run out wide at Stavolo Perez through on the inside and uh, now we have uh, probably one opportunity to get this position back lunging down the inside into the bus stop Perez again uh, taking to those curbs and uh, again that uh, ruins his exit uh, out of the bus stop and uh, we're able to hold on to the position so uh, we have uh, managed to hold him off for now but uh, the pace that Sergio Perez has is plainly obvious as Max Verstappen here is making another move this is for the top five as he is uh, clean through on uh, Lando Norris there and uh, ahead of the McLaren who is uh, now dropping down into P6. Meanwhile it's the penultimate lap of the race uh, for ourselves and Sergio Perez. Perez down the inside and through as uh, we now play the DRS game uh, along the Kemmel Strait and uh, I believe lost a position. That's us down a place. Uh, we should have uh, the rear wing open here as uh, we head up uh, towards uh, Lake Homme and uh, indeed we do we almost had too much straight line speed there we push him back towards the left and uh, just barely give him enough space there a bit caught up on the inside curb but uh, we're clean through on Sergio Perez the driving getting a bit aggressive uh, between us but uh, this is for 25 points we have the fastest lap of the race uh, as well by the way so uh, that's a bonus point for us regardless of whether we finish at first or second so long as we maintain uh, our top 10 finish but uh, yeah we are uh, fighting for everything here with Sergio Perez and of course if uh, you know he takes victory that's uh, you know seven more points uh, for Max Verstappen basically in his uh, championship fight as we go wide Perez around the outside as uh, we head through a launch him on contact between us and Sergio Perez has a problem he's lost his front wing there I think and Sergio Perez now uh, struggling as uh, we head towards the start of the final lap we'll look at a replay he turns in very aggressively there uh, we were I think ever so slightly wide and uh, we'll look carefully on this replay here we were very much alongside uh, Sergio Perez heading into the corner uh, even more so by the time uh, we got into the apex we were actually ahead and we were uh, on or, or very close to that inside white line so you know we were taking our line and we left plenty of space for him on the outside but uh, I think Sergio Perez was uh, heading straight for that apex regardless of whether we were there or not and uh, unfortunately for him yeah look at that he was on a trajectory for that apex curb and uh, unfortunately we got there first so yeah I think that's just uh, an unfortunate one for Sergio Perez uh, I think our car is uh, more or less undamaged from that uh, the engineer won't actually tell us about it he just says it's the final lap and don't worry about it basically so uh, we move on to the end and uh, this one may be a little controversial but uh, nonetheless it will be another 26 points in the bank here in Belgium and uh, we continue it's a hole in the margin. Absolutely fantastic.
Nick, that is a brilliant, brilliant result. Well done. To Max Verstappen. Who gets the driver of the day. And it was a brilliant drive from him, to be fair. Many doubted whether they could pull off the win here at Spa Francorchamps, but they've done so in spectacular style. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Well, a victory here in Belgium makes it three in a row. Carlos Sainz reclaims a second position with Lewis Hamilton in third. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. This result then narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Often my go-to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Alrighty then, well, um, that was uh, certainly a race that we just watched, yes. Um, uh, you'll have to let me know what you think of the, the, the collision there with Perez, uh, I don't know how to call that one. Uh, we were, we could have been further to the left up on top of the inside curb, uh, to be fair, um, but uh, at the same time. Uh, Perez was uh, turning in very hard uh, to that corner so uh, yeah I don't know how to call that one but uh, anyway um, ultimately he finished down in 8th uh, position uh, after making a pit stop he probably should have just pushed on with no front wing um, and uh, probably could have come away with a better result just uh, plowing on on the final lap but uh, anyway they chose to uh, come in and get that rectified. But anyway, I'll run through the finishing order as myself, ahead of Sainz, uh, Hamilton Verstappen, uh, ahead of Lennon Norris, George Russell, Daniel Ricciardo, Sergio Perez, Lance Stroll, and Esteban Ocon rounding out the points that finishes. Fastest lap going the way of Max Verstappen in the end. Uh, so we didn't actually manage to bring that one home. Max Verstappen sneaking that one in uh, late in the race there. Uh, in terms of the driver's standings, uh, we move ourselves up into second position with Charles Leclerc moving down into P4. And uh, we are just 31 points now behind Max Verstappen. Uh, Charles Leclerc uh, dropping to 54 points behind. Uh, Signs in between us, uh, 46 points adrift of Max Verstappen. In terms of the team standings, uh, we are third in the standings now. Uh, still, and uh, yeah, still Red Bull Ferrari ourselves. Uh, Ferrari 17 points adrift and we are 87 points behind so yeah not really in the fight there but we'll see what we can do uh, behind us is uh, McLaren 99 points behind so uh, we are just 12 points ahead of McLaren and they are just 5 points ahead of Mercedes so the three of us are all fighting for third in the constructor standing so holding on to that will be the main objective there I think but uh, yeah in terms of the drivers championship we are almost within uh, one Grand Prix uh, race again. So, uh, yeah, the fight is on uh, once again. But uh, anyway, uh, we continue on. We are absolutely smashing George Russell in the rivalry. 14 to 6 at the moment. Uh, he hasn't had much luck go his way so far in that. We've really hit a good run of form uh, recently. 
Uh, the car is uh, in a really good place now and uh, I feel like just personally I'm uh, driving it a, a lot better recently. Uh, these past you know, three to four rounds I've just uh, you know been uh, at uh, a much better level and uh, making a lot less mistakes and uh, just I think the uh, the consistency uh, more so than anything has uh, improved a lot so it uh, it does actually uh, make a big difference so uh, we are actually for the first time in a while going to uh, actually uh, look to sign a new sponsor I kind of just keep blindly renewing sponsors because uh, I keep thinking oh yeah the ones we have are, are pretty good but uh, I never really look to see what new ones are available and uh, in the end uh, I uh, sort of realized I'm actually uh, missing out on uh, quite a lot uh, we have some pretty uh, good uh, options available so uh, the one we are going to go with is uh, this one, Slingshot Fuel. Uh, they, uh, all they want us to do, uh, Slingshot Fuel, uh, is to uh, achieve a podium finish, which, uh, I mean, at this point, if we're not doing that, uh, we're underperforming. So, yeah, we, sh you know, that is an expectation at this point of the season. So, uh, yeah, we will sign them on. And uh, they give us a very, very hefty payout of 480k if we get that goal bonus. So as for the activity timeline then, we'll do the three-day funded team event for a morale boost to all departments. We'll do the two-day simulator training for Piastri to help his experience and focus. We will do the marketing strategy conference for uh, a boost uh, to team acclaim and we'll also do the uh, chassis team building for the uh, morale boost there. Uh, so uh, we then go back uh, to the timeline, we'll move through a little bit and uh, that will come with uh, the uh, resource point generation upgrade to the chassis facility we purchased last time. We continue on through the timeline then and uh, we get that uh, cockpit weight reduction upgrade that uh, failed uh, previously and uh, we also get an email uh, that confirms that Daniel Ricciardo will be retiring at the end of the season. Uh, there won't be another season of this particular career mode, so that uh, isn't really conse consequential uh, in any way, but uh, interesting to note nonetheless. But uh, I did notice his name disappeared from the driver market uh, after the uh, previous uh, lot of signing drivers. Uh, interesting th as well, I did actually try to sign Ricciardo uh, mid-season but uh, he declined. I was just shy of the amount of money I needed to uh, sign up Daniel Ricciardo. He needed 13 and a half million. I think I had like 13.1 million or something. Uh, rather frustrating but uh, yeah his name has uh, disappeared from uh, this list. And so we move on through the timeline for the final time and that is it. We arrive at the Italian Grand Prix. Home race for Ferrari They've had a strong car the last few rounds, but things haven't come together for them. Maybe it is finally their time at their home race to shine. But uh, we'll see how it all plays out for them. But uh, that is going to do it for this one. So I'll say thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to give me some feedback in the comments. Uh, it is always uh, very helpful. And uh, yeah, other than that, I will see you next time. And goodbye.